Hello everyone. In the last session, we discussed about the armature reaction in the synchronous motor. In that, we have discussed about the three different different types of loads: resistive load and pure inductive load and pure capacitive load. Now we will discuss about the synchronous motor. For the synchronous motor, how the armature reaction is possible in the synchronous motor. The most important thing again once again we recollect this armature reactions p means main field effect of main field due to the armature flux is known as the armature reaction so this armature reaction depends on the load that means load current load current means the armature current so when we understanding the armature current then we will uh, we will get the how the main field flux will be varied here the first is for synchronous motor unity power factor load how it operates for unity power factor load the main field flux is like this main field flux is in direct axis just assume it it is in direct axis yes so after 90 degrees generally for anything you will get the emf is this value emf value after 90 degrees emf will be generated for it is a synchronous motor that's why the current is in this direction this current is in this direction that is armature current and the flux is in this direction the flux is in this direction so just observe here the relation between main field and armature flux the main field flux is in this direction and the armature flux is in this direction that means it will it will disturb it will disturb the direction of the main field flux so it will disturb the direction of the main field flux in this direction then it will disturb like this so here for unity power factor load the synchronous motor armature reaction is cross magnetization armature reaction is cross magnetization cross magnetization next second for the second power factor that is 0.8 power factor lagging that is if it is if we are using the rl load if we are using the rl load then how it acts so same phenomena here this is the main field direction direct axis then emf will be in this direction okay then for 0.8 power factor lagging the current value is in this direction because in case of synchronous generator the current value is in this direction but for opposite of alternator is the uh, current of the synchronous motor that's why it is in this direction and we will have the armature flux in this direction armature flux in this direction so this is the main field and this is the cross magnetization armature reaction just observe here this is the main field flux and we have the armature flux in this direction just observe here there is a two components are generated this is the first component this component is armature reaction cross magnetization of armature flux this is magnetization magnetization of the armature flux that means so when the synchronous motor operated with the some power factor angle it is partly demagnetized size and partly cross magnetized partly demagnetized and the partly cross magnetization two conditions will be possible in this case two conditions will be possible in this case okay this is for 0.8 power factor lagging next so 
now we will continue the armature reaction here armature reaction doesn't provide a power loss generally it will it will not give the power loss it causes only a drop of voltage it will be decreases the voltage the shootable component of armature reaction is the reactance so that's why we should represent with some reactance that is the value because if it is a power loss then we will represent with the power but here it is not related to power it is related to flux only so generally in a synchronous machine we have three types of drops are available the first drop is drop due to the resistance so armature have some resistance that is the ra that is a drop due to the ra that value is iara drop and second is drop due to the xrp so due to the leakage reactance we have some drop is possible that is the iaxl drop and third due to the armature reaction so the armature is reversely acting on it that's why we have iaxa drop iaxa drop so we can write the combination of leakage reactance plus armature reaction we can call it as the synchronous reactance xc we can name it as the synchronous reactance and call it as the synchronous reactance so finally the combination of all these resistances and reactance we will get armature reaction plus j into xs will give zs this is called as the synchronous impedance we can call it as the synchronous impedance we can name it as a synchronous impedance because leakage reactance armature reaction and excess all are the synchronous reactants but here the combination of the reactants and the resistance we will get the complete impedance that impedance is the synchronous impedance okay so generally we can give some values for this the synchronous impedance what are those generally we can represents with the drops that is ia ra is the resistive drop that will be represent 0.01 per unit and ia xl is the drop due to the leakage reactance that has the value of 0.15 per unit and next ia xa is the drop due to the reactance that is the 0.84 per unit 0.84 per unit so the combination of all these we will get finally ia zs ia zs value is approximately 1 per unit so drop is possible by this all combination of vector terms we will get the 1 per unit okay so these are the in any synchronous machine different different voltage drops next now we will discuss the next topic is vector diagram of alternator how we will draw the vector diagram of the alternator so so any alternator alternator is having two parts one is the rotating part the rotating part is the field field have some dc excitation that will be field excitation and emf field and this is the field okay and here it will it has the state this is a state arm this is the armature armature is three phase winding armature so we have the three phases these three phases as we have some voltage drop across any two phases that is the voltage v and this is the switch these three switches tbst tripole single through switch that is connected to the load connected to the load so we can define some terms here the first term is e e means so when the rotor is rotates the emf is induced across across this this is called no load emf if there is no load across the armature that is called no load emf we can give the another name that is the excitation emf we can name it as the excitation emf 
and if, if we are connecting a load if you are using the load connecting a load it has some terminal voltage represents with the V V is the terminal voltage when load is connected when load is connected then we can modify this voltage E equal like this the induced EMF E equal the terminal voltage plus drop due to the armature IARA and J the drop due to the leakage reactance plus J drop due to the armature reaction. So the complete EMF should should compensate all these drops. One drop is directly the load voltage. The remaining drop it should it should satisfy the remaining drops is one is resistive drop one is leakage reactance drop another one is synchro armature reaction drop so we can modify this this is the v plus ia ra now if you common the j then it become ia into generally ia xl plus ia xa we can write it as the ia xs so the EMF we can write it as V plus if you common the armature reaction that is RA plus JXS. JXS we can write it as the if you common the IA in both these terms we will get the JXS. So finally the no load EMF have some relation with the terminal voltage is like this IA JS. That means if, if it is generates a no load EMF the EMF have the drop of the terminal voltage as well as the synchronous impedance drop synchronous impedance drop okay so these are the equations that should be useful to draw the vector diagram of the alternator okay so these are the synchronous motor armature reaction and what are the different different drops are available in the synchronous machine and the next is the vector diagram of the alternator okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you